This is lecture 9.3b, graphing linear equations in two variables. Continuing on, we're in example 3, and we've got an equation that looks like this, which is, looks a little bit trickier, but it's really not too bad. We just have a fraction in there. And again, we're making our table with our x and our y, and they're asking us to graph it. So what numbers do you pick? Remember I said earlier, pick numbers that are going to make life easy. One of the things that's important when you're dealing with fractions here is find a number that is divisible by 3. Find a number that 3 will go into because that will get rid of your fractions here. So we have a 3 down here. So my x that I want to put in here, I need to find one that's divisible by 3. So I'm going to put a 3 there because 3 goes into 3. I'm also going to use a negative 3. And maybe I'll also use 6 because 3 goes into 6. Alright, so let's try those and I'll show you what I mean. So this is y equals negative 1 third times 3 plus 2. Alright, so we multiply my numerators, and I have my denominator, plus 2. Any number over itself is 1, and the negative sign stays on there. So y equals negative 3 plus 2. Signs are different. Take the difference between the two, put the sign of the largest one on there, and I get 1. So see, there's no fraction that I'm dealing with there. Alright, let's try it again. Let's just jump down to 6 y equals negative one-third times six plus two. And remember, six is the same as six over one. So I can write this as negative one-third times six over one. So I'm going to multiply those two and then add two. Negative one times six is negative six. Three times one is three. This reduces to negative two. And then I add this two to it, and I get zero. So see again, no fraction involved there. So when you're given fractions, multiply by a number that's a multiple of 3, that 3 will go into, and that will get rid of your fractions there, and you'll end up with whole numbers, and then you'll go ahead and graph it. Example 4, um, again, is not really any different than what we've done in the past up to this point. The only difference is you have to do a little bit more work prior to um, solving. So on this one we have 3x minus 2y equals 6. Alright, if you notice all the other ones, we had y equals 2x plus 1 or something along that line with the y variable or the x variable, doesn't really matter, on one side of the equal sign by itself. And in this one that we have here at the top, that's not the case. So what we have to do is arrange our, is arrange our numbers so that the y variable is by itself on one side of the equal sign. So all we have to do is some basic algebra to move things around. So we want to get rid of this. In order to get rid of that, notice that it is a positive 3x. So we're going to subtract 3x from both sides. And that makes that go away. We can't combine these, so we're just going to leave it 6 minus 3x. So, now we need to get rid of this negative 2 here. So it's being multiplied by y, so I'm going to divide it. And that goes away. So now I have y equals 6 minus 3x over negative 2. All right, so there's a, you could leave it that way and go ahead and make your x and your y and go ahead and plug your numbers in for x and it'll spit out your y values. Or you can continue on to simplify this a little bit more. I don't know that it's really going to matter, but I'm going to show you how to do that anyway because it's going to be important later on in your math career to be able to do this. This negative 2 is under both the 6 and the 3. Not just under one of them, it's under both of them. So I can actually split this, these two numbers up into their own and put each one of them over the negative 2. So I could really rewrite this as 
6 over negative 2 minus 3x over negative 2, if I wanted to. I mean, that's, that's a possibility that I could do. And then I can simplify that even more, because 6 over 2 is 3, and this negative sign goes with it. This here has two negative signs, so two negatives give me a positive, and I have 3x over 2. And I have that there. Now, usually the more correct way of writing this would be put all the variables first. So instead of having it last, the 3x last there, I'm going to put it first and just switch it around. So this and this are the exact same thing, although one looks different than the other. This one right here down the road is going to be the more correct way of writing it, and you're going to be expected to write it that way. But it, when you're just trying to graph an equation and you want to leave it like this and make your x and y table here, that is just fine because they're not asking you to go any further than to just graph it. But later on they will ask you to go further and you'll have to put it in this form. So just be aware of that, that this here is just the 6 over the negative 2 and the negative 3 x over the negative 2. We just split them up and then reduce the 6 over 2 to 3 and we just left that as 3 over 2 because that can't be reduced here and we put the x variable first and then we put the whole number, the 3, last. Okay, so this is the last example. This is example 5 and it says graph each of the following lines and they give you for your first line y equals one half x. So, what we're going to do is uh, make our graph here, and we're going to put any number we want here for x. Let's put zero in, and again, it's a fraction, one over two. So we're going to find something that's divisible by two. So let's put a four in there and a negative four in there, because I can divide two into both of those, and that'll get rid of my fraction. So y equals 1 half times x, in this case it's 0, 1 half times 0 is 0. So we're going to put a 0 right there. The second one, y equals 1 half of 4, 1 half of 4 is 2, so we'll put a 2 there. And y equals 1 half of negative 4, half of negative 4 is negative 2. So there's my three points there, and I'm just going to graph those. I'll do that in blue here. Point zero zero is on the origin. Point four two is one, one two three four, and then I'm going to go up two. So that point right there, and negative four, negative two, one two three four, and then down two. And when I draw a line, I should get a straight line that goes through all three of those points. So, that's not too bad, but I would like to look at B, because B and C can be a little bit tricky for some folks. So, let's go ahead and, whoa, that stayed nice. Um, let's see if we can do this. X equals 3. Well, there's no Y, is there? So, all we know is that X equals 3. So, if I graph where X equals 3, so I'm going to start here, and X means I go left or right, 3. I get that point there. But x equals 3 anywhere along here, right? So because they have not given me a y, y could be anything. So I go to 3 and just draw an up and down line, and that shows me that that equals 3. Now on part c, it gives me y equals negative 2. And so what that means is that I am going to go ahead and graph where y is at negative 2. And I'll do that in blue here. So at negative 2, so I'm right there. And since I'm not given an x value, x can be anywhere along that. As long as y is negative 2, x can be anything. So that's how you graph x equals 3 and y equals negative 2. 
whenever you graph something like that where you're, where you're given an x but not a y value, you're going to get an up and down line, a vertical line. Whenever you're given y and no x value, you're going to, be give, you're going to draw a horizontal line or a line that goes from left to right. Always, always, always. So that's it for lecture 9.3.